Hey, what's up guys? Thought we'd uh, expand our possibilities by learning some new techniques. And uh, honestly, I just wanted to stretch my legs a little bit, maybe do something a little bit more funky. So uh, I went ahead and sketched out another spur piece, basic style piece. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do some basic connections today. That way you can start interlocking your letters together and doing those basic techniques. So before I get into that, I'm gonna do a quick rundown, a quick rundown of all the colors that we have here today. Some of them are scrap cans, some of them are old cans, some of them are new cans. It's going to be a mixed bag, uh, but that's what makes it interesting. So we're going to try out a few different colors. Uh, and let me do the, the, the rundown here for you guys really quick. We got, we got golden yellow in Molotow Premium. Now this is my favorite yellow in the Molotow. It looks like the color of the Lakers yellow. In fact, I did a gig for a guy who was a Lakers fan, and I painted his home basketball court over in the east side, the rich dude. But I used this color for the for the Lakers logo and he loved it. He said it looked just like it. It's a very bright yellow. It covers very good. It makes for very, very nice outer outers. Highly recommend it. I also have some signal yellow in the flame blue 150 mil mini low pressure cans. That's a mouthful. But these are a new treat and we haven't reviewed them yet. So I thought I'd bring a few over just so you guys can see what they look like. Uh, if you've ever used the aliens, uh, this would be a similar type of can, very low pressure, very small and easy to hold so it'll be great for a canvas artist or a muralist artist when you're trying to get that ultimate detail. The only problem with it is it only comes in like six colors. Molotow really needs to expand the color palette of these. Excellent paint, not enough shades. Light orange in the Molotow covers all cans. And as you know, I do like the covers all, but I'm, I'm still skeptical on the name. But I do like them. Uh, Alright, up next we have a uh, this is a fire red, I believe. I'm sorry, yes, fire red in the flame blue mini can. Ditto to this. We just want to see what they look like. Um, excellent quality, but again, expand the color line because I think canvas artists would be loving these. They would be loving them, loving them, loving them. Now for the real covers all, Molotow, Molotow uh, high pressure in a signal red. Is it signal or traffic? Oh, I'm sorry, it's traffic red. For me, this is the real covers all can. These came out a few years ago, and honestly, I, I think they were just too good for everyone at the time. People didn't realize how good they were. These are like double the pigment in the premium can, and I would say double the premium pigment in the covers all cans. These really do cover anything. And uh, Molotow might stop making them. Please buy these, because you will love this can. If you want something that covers more than a Rusto can, get yourself one of these, because like I said, it was just too good for America at the time. Well, I think the major problem is it wasn't marketed well. That's why I'm here, to change that, to fix that. <laughs> also, I got some Dare Orange. Uh, I got Shock Blue. Of course, everyone loves Shock Blue. Let me go back to that Dare Orange. This is an excellent shade, by the way. Of all the oranges, this is my favorite. Uh, all right, Shock Blue. Uh, we got Calypso Middles. And uh, these Calypso Middles are going to be my fill color, as well as this Aqua. This is going to be the bottom base of my fill color, as well as this Grasshopper I have right here, too. So I got a great color spectrum. My fill shades are going to be right here with the cool shades. My splash outer stuff is going to be the hot colors. That way they contrast nicely. You got your yang, you got your yang, you got it both covered, baby. You feel me? I went ahead and got the piece kind of sketched out for you. Kind of a funky old school style. You know, it's 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 in my vein, of course. But um, we added a few little bits here, and I'm going to go ahead and start running this through for you guys and how it's done. So basically, what you want to do when you're making your bits connections, things like that, you need to have like an origin spot, right? And I always in like the crook of a letter, like see this is the S right here, this little crook of the letter is a great place to create an origin spot, you know, where the, where the bit can come out of, you know, almost like it's a fractal, like, you know, coming out to life, right? And so I or originate down here, come here, overlap, and now you got a bit right there and you just connected something to your piece. Same thing over here, coming out the end, you can do them like that, and then you can have what I like to call a hangover bit where it hangs out on the end of the letter. So here's the, here's the end of the S, and then you have this other bit just hanging on like that. And so it gives a little bit more armor, if you will. A little bit, a little bit more protection from the enemies. You feel me? Over here, did the same thing with the R. So all you have to do is find on your long pieces, you can add a little bit extension, and then you can make crossovers, you know, according to your own style, of course. <clears throat> but I like to have them kind of blend in and, and reconnect back into the letters and kind of go over a little bit. Just creates a little bit of depth. Also, right here is the same technique. 
where you just drop out and bring out a bigger extension and this will be a gap right here so you have a piece like this crossing over and then it goes underneath and now you can just create a little bit extension down there too. These are very simple techniques but what it does is it gives your letters a little bit more funk, a little bit more soul, a little bit more flavor, a little bit more of that finesse. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start filling this in and we can talk a little bit further about all the great things that we do with these cans and all the great stuff that I've been hearing from you guys too. So I woke up this morning from an email from the website and uh, I don't know if you can catch this on here but a young man emailed and he said that he was riding Spur before me and he wants to know if he can still ride the name. But of course brother, of course you can ride it. There's more than one Dan, there's more than one Stan. Why not? I don't see a problem with that. But you better battle me, you better come back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's all good, homie. Uh, you should send me some flicks of your graffiti. I'd like to see what you got going on out there. Uh, it's a big world. I'm sure there's plenty of room for two spurs. So big ups, send me flicks, we'll work together. All right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Molotov Premium in the middle Calypso. That's gonna be my main fill color. For the cap, I'm gonna be using the Lego cap because it's, a, it's just a good all-around cap. It's not too fat, but you can at least get very nice thick fills with it. It's a good all-around cap. So let's go check it out and see how it writes. Let me show you what the Lego looks like. So as you see, it's a, you know, it's about a two-finger wide cap on a normal spray. If you pull out a little further, it definitely does get fatter, but it's softer. I would, I would consider it very similar to the old school New York outline on a Molotow can. For me, that's, that's about the most equivalent of it for me. It's very, very close to it. It's a nice controllable spray, and uh, yeah, I like it. I like it rather much. This can of Molotow has been sitting in my shed for a year. I was, what was I, gonna, I think I was going to paint a skateboard and do art with it. Never got around to it. But as you see, it keeps rather well. Look at that. Yeah, this is a fantastic shape. Alright, so all the upper parts of my letters, I think I'm just going to fill with this color. And then we'll move lower parts, do a little fade up or whatever. I don't, actually, I don't even know what I'm doing with this bit right now. So let's just fill it in. Just to keep it funky. Now this bit might be a different color. I'll have to think about that one. Or maybe it's the same. Alright, maybe this guy right here. Perfect. Oh, and I just want to let you guys know um, I'm doing a self video soon that's going to be featuring all of the artwork you sent me. I've got a lot of really great replies on Instagram, and if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you go to at Green Ranger Reviews on Instagram. Um, I'm having a little technical difficulties with my phone, so I promise I will be replying to everyone shortly. I try to reply to everyone, but I'm just so popular. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Um, I appreciate all the feedback I get. Um, you guys have given me some great ideas. And so yes, to the young man that commented on my last video, we will be for sure doing a needle cap and stencil cap review. I think those are great comments and we haven't, we haven't touched those yet in any of the reviews yet. So we'll be sure to be launching that soon. And probably sometime in the next week. And uh, just keep your eyes peaked for that. Anyways, we'll go ahead and let's get this filled in. Move it on down. I just hope that I'm motivating you to get off your butt and do some graffiti. That's my job here, to make you excited to paint. Whew. Almost spilled some middle calypso on my, my new kicks. Gotta be careful. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and continue with the same cap. It's that, it's that uh, Lego cap. And uh, I don't think it's clogged up yet. Nope, still painting. Beautiful. 
fresh can of Calypso to go ahead and make your fill nice and buttery. Butter dog. Make it buttery doggy. Mm, I love this color. It's like that 1950s, 1960s, like a Chevy, like Finn, Finn car. I guess more like a Bel Air, Chevy Bel Air with the white turquoise two-tone. You know what I'm talking about. I think I'm gonna connect these two bits together too. Let's do that. Woo! Let's make a giant bit. Maybe I'll change my mind, I don't know. Sounds kind of wild. Man, I gotta say we got mad blessed with this weather, man, because it's been raining like crazy over here. And uh, I've just been itching, itching to go out and just kind of stretch my legs and paint a piece, you know? Well, yeah, I guess graffiti's a pretty degenerate art. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this can has about this much left, so what I'm going to do is put it on the shelf to chill for a bit. That way we can keep that color just in case we need to do any cutbacks or anything. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the flame blue. Look how old that can is, it's all rusty in my car. This is ocean blue. Ocean blue, flame blue, low pressure, European high quality spray paint. This is a lower pressure paint. So it's definitely going to come out a lot slower. So I might switch up my caps. So just bear with me really quick. So I've switched up to the pink dot on the flame blue can. And as you can see, the output has increased dramatically. So that'll be a great filler for this particular kind of kind. Um, as you see, the acrylic gives the appearance that it covers more. And it, it, does, it does hide excellently. It's definitely good for hiding. But the formula is not going to be as durable as the lacquer formula in the premium. So keep that in mind. As Molotow refers to it as perceived thickness. But it's still a high quality paint. I would put the flame blue in the same realm as Montana 94. It easily competes with that product. So if you've used the 94, I think you'll rather like it. I'm going to leave a blank spot here because I think what I'm going to do is contrast with another green on that car. So we'll go ahead and leave that. And hopefully, hopefully this flame blue will stretch all the way to the end, although I don't think it's going to might have to augment shades. So what I'll do is come over here, 
fill this bit just to give it some balance because somewhere in the middle I'm going to have to use another shade to balance this out because this can was only like half full. I gotta say the flame, this was raw plywood. The flame blue definitely covers the raw plywood nicely. Although I would recommend buffing whatever you're going to paint first. Nevertheless, in a pinch, it appears you can get by without it. But you will use more paint, so keep that in mind. One thing I really like about the blue is um, it has almost no odor. I'm, you know, as you can see when I make these videos, it's hard to do it without a respirator. With a respirator, you know, it's easier to talk without it. I'd prefer to wear a respirator, but um, I need to communicate with you guys, obviously. For someone who doesn't wear a respirator all the time, uh, I would say this is a great paint to use outdoors. I've seen some videos of you guys painting in your bedrooms. At least get a piece of plywood and go outside. It's not good for you. <laughs> Fantastic, low odor, low solvent, flame blue. All right, let me go ahead and get that filled in. What was I doing over here? I don't even remember. I'm just gonna fill it in. Let's fade that. Let me bring some of that down here. I might be able to stretch this, at least partially. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. Remember that trick, guys? Remember to only do it on an empty can. Don't do it on a full one, it'll explode. I really did get the last nugs out of that one. So I'm going to be using a Molotow High Pressure in the Grasshopper with a New York Fat Cap. And like I said, to me, this is the real covers all can. The, the high pressure cans are extremely pigmented and they just flare like the dickens. You want to come over here real quick? I'm going to show you how they flare. I'm going to be painting over this in a second, but just check this out. That's what the New York Fat Cap. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? <laughs> These cover like crazy. It's, cra it's crazy too because um, oftentimes when you want a can to really flare out, the formula actually has to be thinner. Somehow they've made a thicker paint that flares like a thin paint. It's phenomenal. And again, they might discontinue this brand because no one realized how good it was. It's partially to Molotov's inability to market it properly and partially because I think it was just no one realized how good it was. This is a fantastic paint. Do not sleep on the high pressure. So let me go ahead and start doing some fill stuff with this. What I want to do is kind of join these areas, if you feel me? Just to kind of create a barrier between the two. Oh, what a gorgeous shape. Man, the valve on these cans, it's like nothing else. Such a gnarly color. Looks like some huevos, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Just, just consider me like your, uh, your foul mouth uncle that comes over for Thanksgiving and embarrasses your mom all the time. They're like shop moms that run the shop. And I embarrass them, because I'm like that uncle that does that. But you know what? I'm the cool uncle that takes you to go paint graffiti, so, there. <laughs> Alright. Man, 
man, this color is popping. Woo! Just a wild popping color. I've already forgot where all my connections are, but we'll, we'll, we'll find the connections again. No worries. Yeah, this is the real covers all can. Mm -mm -mm. Good grief, that's good. This color is so light, it should be watery, but it's not. It's just, mm. it's like you could take a bite out of it. Arr, arr, arr. Oops, it's got my head on there. <laughs> it's almost like a yellow too. Kind of interesting. I get so many comments on the videos from kids that are like, oh snap, I gotta study for homework. But our Primo video's on, and I'm just like, oh, I used to be you, I used to be you. Do your homework, but definitely come paint with me afterwards. I want you guys to succeed in life. I want you to win, to win at everything. Do it. But anyways, so up next, I have Shock Blue Molotov Premium with a slightly used Lego cap on it, so it might be a little cloggy, we'll find out. Um, if you haven't used Shock Blue, it's by far my favorite blue in the whole Molotov Premium line. It's almost fluorescent. Those of you who've used it know exactly what I'm talking about. Shock Blue, mm, mm, mm. I love you so much. I love you, I love you, I love you. This will be a good shade to do some uh, little bit action up here. Oh yeah, fantastic. Again, I'm using the Lego cap and I'm putting a, a little mini 3D on these bits just to kind of give them some depth. I know I've mentioned this before. There are many ways that you can fill a piece. So don't um, feel like you gotta do it the way I'm doing it. If something else inspires you, then just you do you. You do you, and uh, that's all good. colors really offset each other really nicely all right I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of that blue down here just to kind of uh, create a little bit more depth look how well the shock blue covers on the raw wood check it out see like these did okay I mean but they're really light shades right but look at that oh it's like wax it comes out mm, love it buy any Molotow colors, make sure you get some shock blue. That's all I gotta tell you. Make sure you get some shock blue. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just add a little overlap dots down here, just to kind of give it a little depth. And then I'm gonna come with another blue and do some stars. 
Again, you're your own grandpa. You do you on this part. All right, I think it's time to get another shade. I think this fill has a lot of nice cool colors. I'm gonna put a semi-warm color in there. So I got some Malto Mad Psycho Pink, and it's a very vibrant shade of pink. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of star bit goodness inside of there, just to kind of, uh, you know, add a little bit of depth to it, if you will. As you see, the Psycho Pink, for a light shade, covers quite well. I think you'll be well served with it. Star is always fun to do. It's a good way to practice your lines as well. Kind of forces you to work in a confined space if you want to make them really perfect. But I'm using a semi fat cap to do this right now, so that's kind of fun. Release a high output cap. But it's doing well. Provide a little color balance. Who knows what I'll do. We'll, we'll put another layer over here, I'm sure. Nolan Rose was asking about plywood sizes. While we're on that, let me show you what a standard sheet of plywood looks like. This right here is a standard American style sheet of plywood. This one is laminated. You don't need to use laminated plywood. It usually costs about 20 bucks a sheet. If you want to, go right ahead. But for a little bit less money, if you're on a budget, you can get a sheet of OSB, which is Oriented Stranding Board. And what that is, is basically chipboard. And it's cheaper, you have to put a buff coat, like a really thick coat of buff paint, but they're like five or six bucks a board. If you get two or three of them, stack them vertically, you got yourself a nice little wall. I would say at a bare minimum, one sheet of plywood would be best to practice some basic piecing letters or any type of basic stuff like that. For me personally, I would say three vertically or orientated pieces of plywood will give you a wall that is eight feet high and 12 feet wide, which is more than enough room to rock a character and a simple piece in your backyard. So I think when summer comes around, me and Ed are gonna do a special video. I'm gonna teach you guys how to build a wall, your own graffiti wall. So that'll be a lot of fun because you know what? Not everybody can be the king of the streets. Not everyone wants to be the king of the streets. Some people just want to do the graffiti style art in their own privacy. You feel me? I guess we're going to have to use this color. So I forgot to fill this in and I'm going to have to use this weird color to fix it. Which means I'm going to have to go through here and add a few little things to kind of balance it out, which is fine. We're just messing around, right guys? And you know what? This actually offsets really nicely in the bottom, so why not? Beautiful. Hey, what's up, Inky? You coming to say what's up? Come on over. What are you doing? I think that's enough stuff. All right, dope. So I got this uh, traffic red Malto, what is it? Malto High Pressure. And uh, I think I'm gonna use it for my splash. I think it'll offset nicely with the lighter shades in the fill. Uh, it'll contrast well. And um, 
you'll get to see what the covers all, what I call the covers all red. You'll get to see how it looks because it's fantastic. Look at that. Huh, beautiful. So I'll just leave a little gap right there because I'm going to put my outline. Oops. We'll fix that. I wasn't paying attention. But look at this stuff, man. This is a red. It really covers over that black. And again, I'm using a thin, a thin to medium tip, and of course, again, the wind's blowing my shit, but good grief, it covers great. I would say this is the most similar to like a Rusto with a fancy cap. That's what I would call this. Very, very nice. So I'm gonna be having a 3D coming out like right there, like right there, and like right there. So I'll go ahead and just kind of just start my splash like this. And that'll give me the room I need to drop my 3D in there when I have a chance. Look at that one coat. Over that black. And this is a. This was one coat of uh, rusto on this dry wood, but man, look at that. Fantastic. We'll go ahead and let that dry. All right, let's go ahead and play with this little can of flame blue uh, acrylic. And again, this is in the uh, fire red, so it's a little bit different. So this can is a very low pressure acrylic. And as you can see, it's uh, very controllable, easy to use. The color matches the uh, high pressure pretty well. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit redder, but in the big spectrum of things, I don't think we'll notice a difference. So this would be good for just adding in a little other pieces of uh, splash that we have going on in here. I really like these. They really need to expand the color line on these, for sure. They actually paint pretty nice. Not bad for red. All right, dope. So now we're going to go ahead and start doing our outline. And um, I think I'm going to use the stock tip that comes on the Molotow because some of y'all were asking how it, how it writes, you know, doing outlines and whatnot with the premium cans. So the stock tip is a blue dot. They're commonly found. Um, sometimes I don't really care for them. Uh, sometimes I really love them. So I want to see how I feel about them this season. I haven't really used them for outlining on the premium. But I think it's important that we do that because a lot of times people just use the cap that comes on the can. So let me go ahead and get this cap started and we'll go ahead and start doing some. Alright, six, so let's go ahead and just start outlining it. You know, I forgot how nice this cap paints. Go ahead and fill that in with black again, since that's our 3D color. I buffed the wall out with black, so it's probably going to be the easiest 
3D ever. All right, now for this upper line. Now it looks like this is going to be coming down like this. Remember the Mini 3D guys, the Mini 3D. stand alone. The P stands alone. Now I think I was going to make this like one giant bit. Didn't I say I was going to do that? Connecting the S and the P together like that? I think I was going to do that. So let's leave that like that for now. Until I decide on what I want to do. figure out what I had going on here earlier because I don't remember. I'll figure it out. Close enough. Yeah, see this isn't supposed to be here. Get rid of that. bits were. <laughs> That's okay, we'll find ourselves. Oh, I hate diagonals. That's alright. I'll survive, you'll survive. Graffiti will survive. That was supposed to have a bit going like this, wasn't it? Something like that, right? Oh well.
All right, guys, so I'm going to be get deep into that corner over there, and it turns out about a 45 degree angle, so it's gonna be a little difficult to make sure we get that 3D right. And so what you wanna do is look straight at that individual letter at a straight angle, and just make sure you line it up properly. Uh, my buddy Beehive used to refer to this as all-terrain painting, so we're gonna do a little bit of all-terrain painting in remembrance of beehivers. Let's go over here. So as you see, I got quite a mess here to deal with. So what I'm trying to do is just look at that letter as straight as possible and then making my 3D to balance it like that. It's not the easiest thing to do, but you can do it. I have faith in you. Make sure you paint around the sides too. I'll do that on that side as well. Get to it. And uh, I think I've decided that I don't want to have a giant bit here, so I'm going to fix that too. First, let's go this way. The giant bit idea was funny, but I think we need to break it up. I think that reads a little bit better. I had a bit up there, but I think I'm gonna destroy it for the sake of having a 3D up there because we need more 3D. And then, um, let's see, here as well, a little thicker on top. And I think this came from in here, didn't it, guys? It's supposed to be like that. We'll fix that in a second. Nothing a little cutback can't fix. Honestly, I just got a little lost. I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> That's overlapping right there. These lines aren't perfectly straight, but I'll fix those on the cutback. This one looks all right. I think I might leave that as is. Yeah, I gotta put the little thingy here. Just make sure it lines up with this down here. Go ahead and fill that in. You can clean it up with the cutback as well. I just forgot to paint that right there, so I'm just cutting it back in here. Just cleaning up these lines.
so I got some of this golden yellow. I'm gonna do my outer outer with it. I think it'll offset nicely with the other shades. I'm using the stock blue tip that comes on the premium can. Let's go ahead and uh, create a little contrast here. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a beautiful shade of yellow. Oh yeah. This is perfect. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Remember to look at the spray, not the tip. Look at the spray as you're painting. Just like baseball. Keep your eye on the ball. So what I'm doing is I'm just double thickening up my outer. So I'm on one of those nice thick old school outers. Whew. Got a little loose on that one. Now I'm just going to be doing some little bubs, just some extra bub love, feel me? Just to kind of create some interesting depth going on here. Now this is a good way to hide your mistakes if you have a shitty edge on the corner. Just put some bubbles. Or if you have a nice edge put some bubbles. It's just a way to create some depth. We could all use a little more depth in this world. All right, time to do the shines. I got a half full can of Molotov Premium and Sigma White. I think we're ready to go. Usually I do that better. <laughs> Let's put a fresh cap. I think when you do your outer outer, it's usually a good idea to try to use a nice and fresh cap actually. So what I'm gonna do is put a Lego on it. A brand new Lego cap. So we're gonna do a brand new Lego cap on the Premium. Yeah. Turn the lights on, baby. Turn the lights on me. Turn the lights on, baby. Oh, did I just fuck that up? I agree. <laughs> oh, Green Ranger, what did you do? I wasn't keeping my eye on the ball, guys. That's what was happening. There we go, much better.
Alright, remember where I messed up that shine? What I want to do is just kind of bring back the mini 3D that was there. Just to kind of give it some depth. There we go, that looks better. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. Just doing a little bling here and there. Alright, so now we elevated you guys to doing the basic, basic simple piece with a little few connections here and there just to kind of give you that look of a little bit more funk, a little bit more soul, a little bit more flavor. Um, like I said, we are, we are starting from the winter of toydom and bringing you guys into the spring of ascension. We're going to be doing all kinds of pieces. So right there is your basic foundation for how to do bits and connections. Anyways, um, just want to say it's been a pleasure working with you guys again. I want to give a shout out to all the YouTube commenters. I want to give a shout out to all the kids who call us at the warehouse. All the kids that be hitting me up on Instagram. I'll be getting with you soon, I promise. I'm having some technical difficulties. But anyways, so let's go ahead and close out this video. I think we've covered a lot. As you can see, the colors are beautiful. They cover well. They provide beautiful, 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 beautiful tonality. And uh, they are available at artprimo.com. That's our website, artprimo.com. It is your source for all things graffiti. Every order over $75 ships for free. So if you want to get cans, be sure to stock up. Right now we have Flame Orange on sale for $4.95. That's just barely over Rusto prices. And it's a high quality European paint. $75 free shipping. You can't beat it, guys. So anyways, again, artprimo.com is your source. Green Ranger Reviews, at Green Ranger Reviews. I'm your review guy. Hit me up. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.